What's up guys, today on Dirt Lifestyle we are gonna go over a solution that is about as inexpensive as you can get to stick aluminum together. You don't need a TIG welder, you don't need anything crazy, you really just need some basic hand tools and when I say cheap, I mean this is cheap. If you look in my Amazon cart that I have made up for this video with the cheapest torch and all the different tools that you would need to do this and the rod, you're under 50 bucks. So it's a pretty damn good deal. You just need a little bit of practice and I really think that anybody can do this. You can use this for fabrication, for trail repair, for boat repair, you can make art with it, whatever. Anything really that doesn't require a high tensile strength. So like I wouldn't build an aluminum bumper out of it, but there's tons of options that you have to build really cool products and not have a TIG welder. I've been waiting on some parts for some other projects, so I decided to mess around with this stuff. I've been curious about it for a long time. You know, it's a really low melting point, so I wasn't sure how strong it would be, but I could tell it's actually pretty strong. So there's clearly a bunch of different projects that these would be perfect for. Definitely not for everything, but I think if you are really creative, then you could probably find a whole bunch of different applications that these would, you know, they would rock. I'm definitely going to be keeping some in my trail bag, and I'm sure you're gonna be use, seeing me use them to repair something on the trail in the future. All right, so here is all you need to do this job. A little acetone to clean things up, map gas or propane, whatever your fuel choice is. Uh, make sure you use a stainless steel brush. I always use stainless with aluminum. A striker, if you don't have something that strikes automatically. This is the main torch that I use, but I do have three different torches that I mess around with. If I'm welding um, or brazing something that's thick, I'll use this double-ended torch right here. And then these are the brazing rods. They were cheap, they're on Amazon. Um, all this stuff is in a shopping cart on my Amazon list. So that'll be in the description if you're interested. For how inexpensive this stuff was, I was pretty surprised at the results. These are two chunks of scrap that I had laying around in the shop. They are 3 16 so it's kind of on the thicker side for just a single-ended torch. It's gonna take us a little while to get it hot enough. The double-ended torch is obviously going to do a lot better at getting this hot fast, but for this video, I just wanna show you guys how to do it with a single-ended torch because I think that's what most people have. Before you do anything, you have to clean this stuff up really good. It's aluminum. Really, all you gotta do is you, you brush it up really good with the wire brush, you take some acetone, you wipe everything really clean, and you're ready to go. Before I fire up this torch, I'm gonna try to explain to you what exactly we're doing because I think that as I'm talking with the torch on, it might be really hard to understand me. I'm still gonna give it a shot in both ways, but I'm gonna explain to you how this works first. I've got a GoPro set up right here so we can get close-ups of everything as it's happening, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the torch, we're gonna heat the whole thing first so it's not uh, sucking away our heat. You know, aluminum's basically just a giant heat sink. Once this all gets hot enough, we're gonna aim our torch where the joint is, and then we're gonna be just slowly tapping where the joint is. We're gonna just slowly tap, slowly tap, slowly tap, until we see it start to liquefy. Once it starts to liquefy, we know that we can slowly start working our heat through, and we're just gonna try and follow with our brazing rod. You can see it's starting to liquefy, but it's liquefying onto the top piece of material, not on the bottom. So because it's sticking to the top, we're gonna try to heat the bottom up just a little bit more. Yep, still, still way hotter on the top piece. There we go. I'm gonna try to draw it through the back by applying a little bit of heat. Oh yeah, she's hot enough. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. We just gotta let that sit. So as you saw, the bottom piece took much longer to heat up than the top piece did, and that's expected. This is clearly a much larger heat sink. Um, you know, in hindsight, I probably should just broke out the double torch just so I could really get that nice and hot. But you saw, I was able to heat up the bottom plate enough that I was able to draw the braze down into the bottom piece of material as well. And I'll flip the camera around on this other side so you can see that we were able to actually pull it over to the other side. If the brazing rod wants to follow the heat. As we got things hot enough, you saw that brazing rod start to smooth out onto both pieces of material. That's exactly what we're looking for. We were able to draw some of that stuff underneath this and it kind of followed up and tried to fill the void here. Ideally, you want to be able to braise, you know, every edge you can, but if you're building a box or something from scratch, you don't have that accessibility to be able to braise both sides. So I just kind of wanted to braise one side to show you what it looked like. Let's see how strong this is. I'm not interested to see if this will break. I can break it. I want, I'm interested to see what it will take to break it. So we will break this. We're gonna start simple. We just got a pair of pliers here and uh, I'm gonna pry. We've got the side that's not brazed, the side that is brazed. So I'm gonna pry away from the side that's not brazed because I think I'll have the best leverage. Oh yeah. That's on there pretty dang good. So next, I guess a bigger tool. I've got it cinched down in the vise pretty damn good here. So we'll just try a crescent wrench. Oh, I'm getting movement. Okay. Oh yeah, this can do it. There we go. So, I mean, imagine if we braised both sides of it. Oh yeah, and I was able to draw some through the bottom of the joint, but I could have, if I would have played with it a little bit more, I would have been able to draw a little bit more through the base of this joint. So if I would have drawn a little more, bit more through the base of the joint, and if I would have brazed the other side, this would actually be pretty dang strong. Two more quick tips regarding brazing. One would be the torch. So there's a lot of cheapy torches out there. Um, in the Amazon cart that I put together, I have really inexpensive, like $15 torches. They are fixed. They don't have this swing arm. This swing arm is really important, believe it or not. It's really nice because you can swing it to however you're standing. It can make it really easy to heat up whatever it is that you're working on. Also, if you're underneath a vehicle, sometimes it's nice to be able to just set it down heat something up if you need to bend it, whatever you gotta do. With brazing something like this to get it to stick to the other material, you can prep this to give you an advantage. And what I mean by that is that you can take and you can heat up the edge that you want to stick to something else and you can just kind of run your brazing rod along the edge of it and melt it in just a little bit. Then once it cools, clean it up really good with a wire brush and that'll help it carry the braze from one side to the other whenever you heat it up against your next piece of material. So we didn't use that technique here. I didn't really see it being called for here, but again, it's just something that's worth mentioning. All right, now to the real project. I've got this aluminum fuel tank here that I had to cut a fitting off that came with the tank. I welded the rest of these on here, but I don't need the placement of the one that came with this universal tank. We're gonna weld a patch. Instead of welding it, we're gonna braze it with some of this brazing rod. I'm pretty confident in this stuff. I've been messing with it, like I said, for the last couple days, and I have no reason to believe that this won't be able to hold back a little bit of diesel fuel from spilling over. So we're gonna take a shot at it, heat it up, throw a little brazing rod in there and see how it looks. Of course, one of the chunkiest looking brazes of my whole career is on camera, but that's okay, I'll show you guys. So you can tell it's definitely, um, since it's flattened out, you can see how it kind of like merges into the base material. And that means that I've got penetration on both materials. That is not gonna leak. I will air test this and confirm, but that I guarantee is not gonna leak. Man, I could not get the tank hot enough to accept it. So I just kept taking the rod and I would just kind of move the puddle around a little bit, move the puddle around a little bit, and I would just, work it around and around and around with my torch until it finally started to sink down and you could just kind of see it all start to sink down because it finally got hot enough. So this is what we're left with. But again, that is definitely gonna be a watertight seal. I'm not worried about it leaking and I bet you that's gonna be strong. It's got plenty of brazing rod in there for sure. I think this stuff is badass. I really, really like it a lot. For how cheap and how easy it is to use, it's pretty hard to beat. And for trail repair, you know, I've got an aluminum fuel tank, I have an aluminum uh, oil pan, I have an aluminum radiator, aluminum power steering reservoir, so I can repair any of that stuff now just by 
cleaning it up, draining everything out, of course, and then just repairing it right there on the trail. Now I'm, I'm ready to go wheeling again. So pretty hard to beat that kind of portability. This video is not sponsored by anybody other than my own curiosity. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you learned anything or if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. If you want to get Dirt Lifestyle shirts, hats, stuff like that, we've got them available on our website, thedirtlifestyle.com. We also have a Patreon page if you want to support us that way. And if you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next Friday.